Let me start this preview of Brown Symposium 38 with a story that's been told time and time again. Between 1801 and 1803, Ludwig van Beethoven, inspired first by the ideals of the French Revolution and then by the rise to international power of Napoleon Bonaparte, composed his third symphony, a work that would revolutionize the history of that preeminent instrumental genre of the 18th and 19th centuries. In acknowledgement of that societal link, Beethoven originally titled this symphony Bonaparte. But when he learned that Napoleon had had himself crowned Emperor of the French, he rescinded that title and renamed his new work the Symphonia Eroica, the Heroic Symphony, thereby associating, or, or, their, or rather, uh, excuse me, uh, thus associating its strife-ridden and ultimately triumphal music not with any individual, but with heroism, generally speaking. What you're looking at here is the manuscript title page. Yet Napoleon remained emblematic of the issues deeply embedded in the genesis and the music of this work. And when Beethoven was preparing to publish the symphony a few years later, he again told his publisher that the title of the work was, quote, actually Bonaparte. Ultimately, he left the choice of the title of the more specific or the more general title to the German publisher. And that publisher, realizing that publishing a German symphony with a p dedication to a French conqueror in 1806 would have been a commercial disaster, opted to retain the general title, Symphonia Eroica. In this guise, Beethoven's Bonaparte symphony has become one of the most celebrated of all masterpieces of 19th century music. Now I tell that story to illustrate the basic premise behind Brown Symposium 38. The premise that since time immemorial, revolution and the arts have gone hand in hand. Often, the arts have bespoken the issues and themes that have given rise to revolutions. Often, revolutions have been fueled by contributions from visual artists, musicians, playwrights, and literature generally. And just as often, the fine art and performing arts themselves have experienced major conceptual and technical revolutions that have affected how they address themselves to not only the worlds of which and for which they were created, but also posterity and its own revolutions. Whether one construes revolution in its strictest sense as an attempt to seize and wield power, or in a broader sense as a set of changes, either conceptual or political, that profoundly affect the lives and works of contemporaries and posterity, it's difficult to escape the notion that the arts and revolution have historically intersected in profound and profoundly symbiotic ways. The exploration of these intersections is the business of Brown Symposium 38. The first thing for me to note here today is that beginning this year, the Brown Symposia will alternate years with the Schilling Lecture Series. This means that Brown Symposium 38 will take place not in 2016, but in 2017. But go ahead and mark your calendars, because it will be an event to remember. The theme of the symposium is Art and Revolution, and it will take place here on the campus of Southwestern University on Wednesday through Friday, March 1st through 3rd, 2017. Preparations are already well underway. At the heart of our program are five distinguished speakers whose talks will center on a particular set of intersections of revolution and the fine arts. On March 2nd, 2017, there'll be three featured guest speakers, all giving talks on the intersection of one or more of the arts and a conceptual revolution. Proceeding alphabetically, these are Professor Ryland Rebaka. Professor Rebaka is professor of African, African American, and Caribbean studies in the Department of Ethnic Studies at the University of Colorado at, Bol Colorado at Boulder, where he also has affiliations with the Women and Gender Studies program, the Graduate Program in Critical Theory, the Center for Studies in Ethnicity and Race in the Americas, the School of Education, and the College of Music. He is the recipient of grants from the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the National Science Foundation. He is the author of more than 50 scholarly articles and author or editor of 12 books. He will speak to us on the subject of music and the civil rights revolution. Professor Domnica Radulescu is professor of French and Italian at Washington and Lee University and is the founding director of the National Symposium of Theater in Academe. She has authored, edited, or co-edited nine scholarly books and collections of essays on subjects ranging from early modern and modern French and Italian theater to representations of women, exiles, and gypsies in Western literature and culture. She is also the author of two acclaimed novels, one of which has been translated into nine different languages. 
She'll speak to us on the intersection of theater and feminist revolution. Also on March 2nd, 2017, we'll hear from Professor Barbara Maria Stafford, Distinguished University Visiting Professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology, and before that, longtime professor at the University of Chicago. Professor Stafford's work explores the intersections between the visual arts and the physical and biological sciences from the early modern to the contemporary era. Her current research charts the revolutionary ways in which the neurosciences are shaping our fundamental assumptions about perception, sensation, emotion, mental imagery, and subjectivity. She's the author of 10 books and more than 75 articles on these and other subjects, and she'll speak to us on intersections between the visual arts and scientific revolution, particularly where the neurosciences are concerned. Then, on Friday, March 3rd, 2017, we'll hear from two other distinguished guests. James von Geldern is professor of Russian and international studies and chair of Russian studies at McAllister College, where he teaches courses on Soviet culture and international law. He is the author of Bolshevik Festivals, 1917 to 1920, co-author of Mass Culture in Soviet Russia, Tales, Poems, Songs, Movies, Plays, and Folklore, 1917 to 1953, and Entertaining Tsarist Russia, Urban Entertainments, 1798 to 1917. He's also a practicing attorney representing asylum seekers pro bono in collaboration with the Advocates for Human Rights of Minneapolis, Minnesota. He'll speak on the intersection of visual arts and mass culture in the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in 1917. This is, of course, the centennial of that revolution. And Professor Felicia hardison Landre is Curator's Professor of Theater at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Professor Landre is a theater historian specializing in American, French, and Russian theater, as well as Shakespearean dramaturgy. The author of 14 books, she is also the recipient of numerous theater honors, including induction into the College of Fellows at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., and two prestigious national awards for outstanding teacher in theater and higher education. She's well known internationally as a speaker, having lectured in Beijing, Brussels, Moscow, Nanjing, Tokyo, Osaka, Paris, Rouen, and Venice, and given a lecture tour of Hungary. She'll speak to us on intersections of theater and the European revolutions of 1989 and 1990. But there's also more. To begin with, to kick off our explorations on the evening of Wednesday, March 1st, 2017, the Southwestern University Theater Department will present a play by one of the most acclaimed playwrights of the English-speaking world today, Sarah Rules in the Next Room, a Victorian era drama which adopts a lighthearted tone to deal with serious issues such as sexual repression, gender politics, and technological advances, among other things. This performance will be prefaced by our roundtable discussion featuring members of our theater department, as well as noted Victorianist uh, Professor Eileen Clear of the Southwestern University English Department. And there's more, for we'll also be presenting the world premiere of a specially commissioned work inspired by the prompt of art and revolution by Southwestern's own Professor Jason Hugerhide. This performance will take place on the afternoon of March 2nd. Professor Hugerhide has been at Southwestern since 2004. His works for orchestra, opera, chamber ensembles, and voice have been presented throughout the United States, Europe, and Asia. Those of you who attended Brown Symposium 33 in 2011 will remember our world premiere of his deeply moving setting of Alfonsina's heartbreakingly beautiful final poem, Voy a Dormir. But as everyone who knows anything about Southwestern University knows, we believe that at the acquisition of knowledge and understanding works best when it's participatory rather than passive. For this reason, we're also including two large public salons on Thursday and Friday at Brown Symposium 38. The first of these salons will be hosted by Professor Laura Hobgood, Professor of Religion, and the second will be hosted by Professor Kimberly Smith, Professor of Art History. The initial participants for each day's salon will include that day's featured speakers, plus a selection of conversants from the faculty and student bodies of the university. These salons will not be roundtable discussions, but rather large conversations which begin on stage and gradually move out onto the floor of the auditorium. 
Finally, concurrent with the symposium will be a special gallery exhibit featuring the works of internationally renowned German-born Uruguayan conceptual artist Luis Kamnitzer, whose work explores issues such as institutional critique, repression, and social injustice. Kamnitzer is the personification of the theme of art and revolution. An emeritus member of the college at Old Westbury and the State University of New York, Kamnitsu is a two-time recipient of a Guggenheim Fellowship and the author of three major books. He has worked in the permanent collections of the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum, all those in New York, and elsewhere in Buenos Aires, Houston, London, Madrid, and Zurich, among other places. In Brown Symposium 38, he will participate in both public salons and give a special talk at a gallery exhibition closing reception on Friday, March 3rd, 2017. It seems only appropriate to conclude, or rather, rather to follow what things may come and its exploration of the revolutionary artistic and social potentials of the new technology of 3D printing with a symposium on the subject of art and revolution. I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I hope I'll see you back in this room in March of 2017. Thank you for your attention.